Top K, man, hold on, stop, 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 nigga. Free my boy Tom K, man, you hear me? Hold on. What's up, baby? All right, come on, let's go. Costa Cola. <laughs> Never heard that one before. <laughs> but Coast came through. We're going to be doing a sit down, talking to y'all. We invited them back because the views were so outstanding on the last video we did with Coast. We said, why not do it again? Yeah, I want to show y'all this. This water right here just came in from Amazon. Lucky literally went all out and ordered a 40 ounce water, which is pretty funny. I'm I was supposed to save this for when I do my morning jog, but I'm drinking it already. But, but so there's nothing special about this water. Yeah, it has zero calories. It as, says as natural water spring does. water. Gluten free. As water does. BPA free. I don't know what that is. Non GMO. Okay. And we recycle. And then it's natural spring water. I guess it just looks pretty. It's like, I don't know. But you got it because it says 40 on it. Yeah. <laughs> Extra. <laughs> 40, man. It was my 40. So that's what we're going to be sipping on. Oh, okay, let me tell you a first. Let me tell you a story. No, let me tell you a story real quick. The first time I drank a 40, Old English malt liquor 40. This was right when the movie Minister Society came out. Oh, God. It was 1993. <laughs> it was probably, you no, know, the, the movie came out around 93, but this was probably about 94, 95. I was about 14 years old. I wasn't even born. I, and I was standing in a quinceanera. And it, and it was our first time practicing for this quinceanera. And everybody shows up to the quinceanera practice. And me and my friend, Louis, we go to the minute stop at Wooden Trails and get us some 40-ounce uh, old English because we thought we was cool. We get back to the to the house that we're uh, in the backyard where we're standing in the kitchen. Everybody was practicing. And they were all older than me. They were all like, I was probably in seventh grade. I was probably like one of the youngest ones there. And the girl was uh, probably like in ninth grade so a lot of the people that were standing in this skin center were already in high school and i'm there drinking my 40 trying to be cool <laughs> man i get about that much left of the 40 and i'm already wasted you know what i'm saying and i started talking loud and telling everybody y'all need to get in line and y'all need to y'all need to listen up and man and they were just like base long story short they kicked me out the skin center. and they told me i had to leave i had to go home i had to call my mom to come pick me up and because I went there with my friend Louis, but he was staying there because he was going to stand in the quinceanera. And, That's funny. Yeah, man. And then I had a little girlfriend at the time, and she ended up leaving me and staying with the dude that was took my spot in the quinceanera. Oh, <laughs> Lost my whole girlfriend and everything. Oh, <laughs> Thanks, alcohol. <laughs> yeah, man. Try to be cool drinking a 40 and some old English. Man, that sounds like you too. Like, I appreciate it. Yeah, me too. So, anyway, <laughs> tell them what happened today this morning on the way to church. Look at him now. We literally went to church this morning. This is why I got my church 40, A 40 ounce of water. <laughs> but I wanted to tell y'all about what I went through at church. So if you don't know, I am pregnant. I just made my three month mark. So congratulations to us. But um, most of y'all already knew this. Anyways, we had a guest speaker today. And we, as soon as we saw him, we started cracking up. Like, we were laughing so hard. Mind you, the church is quiet. Well, I wasn't laughing. I was holding in. My, <laughs> it was one of those laughs where you hold in your laugh, where you're just like, like but you can't laugh because it's quiet. And he every, was laughing. I was holding my laugh in. But every, like, <laughs> every time I looked at her, I would laugh. And then when I looked back at the dude on the stage, I was like, want to laugh too. He look. Have you seen the movie Three Hundred? The little elf dude that wasn't allowed to fight in the soldier with the soldiers. Yeah. He looked it like him, and I was just. I could have watched it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna just make fun of him. So I would have watched it. But when I looked at Kelly's <laughs> face, she's like, like smiling. Like, what the hell am I looking at? 
And then after that, it was over. I just kept laughing. Well, I ended up getting my karma, you guys. I am a true believer of karma. It goes around, comes around. Anyways, I'm sitting in the middle of church. We managed to, like, get ourselves together. We're actually trying to, like, listen to his preaching. And out of nowhere, I just get hot. And I know that I'm about to throw up. So I had to rush to the restroom. I threw up. Told him we gotta go, and on our way home, I ended up having to throw up all over again. And in the car, like <laughs> threw up, splattered on the front windshield. <laughs> I felt so bad though because like I didn't do it purposely. Like I had already had a whole bunch of throw up in my mouth, and I was waiting on him to pull over. But it was uh, one of those roads where it's like a, a grass. Just, There's nowhere to turn. I had to wait to the next street, so I couldn't pull over nowhere. And it was like one lane. And I'm like, hold lane. on, hold on, hold on. And I could see her like, <laughs> and then she just <laughs> splattered yeah. all over the windshield. It was, it was bad, you guys. And then I'm like drenched and throw up. The car smells I'm like I'm rolling down the window, <laughs> driving my head out the window. Uh, so karma is, yeah, is real. Hmm. That's, that's not pleasant. I, <laughs> I threw up in my homeboy car a long time ago, back when I used to drink real heavy. It was coming back from a, uh, from a show. And he had a nice car. He was at like a 745. Band That's or the like worst, that. too, when they yeah. like nice cars. And uh, I was wasted in the passenger seat. He didn't really know how to get to my house. He would take me back home. And I was trying to like tell him directions or whatever. And the AC was blowing. And yeah. I was just, everything was spinning. And then before I knew it, man, I just bleh all over <laughs> the gas, all over the windshield. <laughs> And he was like, no, bro, it's all right, it's all right, don't worry about it. And he dropped me off at my house. And just drove off. And he acted, I mean, he was a nice guy, you know what I'm saying? He was, he was <laughs> acting like it's all good, it's, don't even worry about it. But, man, I felt so bad, I just... The complete opposite of like you, he was like... Why didn't you tell me? I was like, damn, you could have hold me, what the hell? Because like, I, I had already like, stopped I'm once sorry. and let her go, like she threw up a little bit. So I was like, damn, if you weren't done throwing up, why didn't you tell me to go? You know what I'm saying? Because I swear, <laughs> got it all I was done. System. And then out of nowhere, it just came back up. So he was like a little rude. I felt bad. And then the kids are in the back gagging like, mm. uh, uh. So it was bad. It was a bad situation. So that's how our morning went. But we still managed to pull through. We're sitting here. Still went to church. Heard the message. <laughs> <laughs> and Coast came through. We ate some lunch. Cause you want to tell him that every time he come, every time he comes, we offer him food and he never. Eats. Okay, we need to get into that because a lot of people are wondering about Coles. How did you lose all this weight? They want to know: Is he smoking crack? Did you oh, just go on a diet? No, I get that a lot. Like people hit me up and they'll be like, uh, if, you're, "If you're on some healthy stuff, then that's great." But I'm worried that maybe you might be. Uh, get tooted up or something. <laughs> I didn't realize that was weight loss so I saw an old picture. Uh, uh, it was a, uh, a matter of fact, it was a video on YouTube that I was, scroll I was scrolling on YouTube and it was an old video of Coast. I was like, damn, that nigga was big. Yeah, like if you if you look at the, the mic pass yeah. that we did way back then, I, that was probably the biggest I ever was. Yeah. And, but now nah, I, uh, I just, I just started dieting, like Eddie DeVille, uh, I, I was seeing that he, started doing the keto diet yeah. and he was losing a lot of weight and I was like man if if Eddie could pull it off I'm pretty sure you know what I'm saying that so explain to us that don't know what is a keto diet so yeah because I hear a lot of people on this keto diet and then I hear different stories of it I don't really understand like the basics of it right so the keto diet is the keto diet is like a um revised version of the Atkins diet from way back when where mm -hmm. you cut your carbohydrates um to like a low carb diet. Yeah, little to, to no carbs and then no sugars and then with the keto you do high protein, high fat, um and I do intermittent fasting every day as well where I'll go eighteen hours out of my day without eating. That's the whole damn day. You're gonna sleep for the rest of the day. No, nah. yeah, when he told me he does this fasting, I could not believe it. So and, and you're there's 24 hours in a day, and you sleep for six, seven hours. So 18 hours are the days you're awake, the time you're awake. Well, no, uh, you you count the hours of your sleep. Oh, okay. You just uh, you start from as soon as you finish one meal to when you start the next one. 18 hours stretch in between that. Yeah. So so if you have dinner at seven o'clock. 
Then you I, can't eat again until like seven in the morning. Seven in the morning is twelve hours, so eight, nine, ten. So one o'clock in the afternoon the next day. So I, I basically I skip breakfast. Yeah, I do that sometimes. It, it's not hard. Like when I tell people that I go eighteen hours without eating every day, they're like, "Oh man, it's got to take some kind of dedication." I don't think. Yeah, I could do it every day because when I do do it, I'd be like, "I need to eat." And really, with with the intermittent fasting, you don't got to do it every day. I yeah. do it every day because I was a big dude and I was trying to get all that off me. But a lot of people that do uh, intermittent fasting. Do you work fasting, out too or you just... Nah, man. You do a straight diet. Yeah. But you could, you could do the fasting like maybe three or four days out of the week and still get good results. But like I said, I just I just said, man, I'm going to do it every day. Well, I'm proud of you. I'm going to talk to you because I did see yeah, a picture of him. Yeah, I know. That him. takes dedication. I saw a picture of him. I actually, Lexi showed me a picture of him uh, last year at the Unity, right? Yeah. yeah. The day of the unity, and there was a huge difference because I just met him this year. So I was like, "Damn! If you would have told me that that was him, I would have, I wouldn't have believed you." So I commend you. Yeah, for that. from then till now, that's uh, well, I started the diet Thanksgiving, so uh, here we are about eleven months. Yeah, uh, I'm down ninety pounds from when I started. Ninety pounds in yeah. one year. Yeah. But I, I'm not on no kind of dope. No, <laughs> none of that. I'm perfectly fine. I'm, so y'all need to cut it out with all that coaxes on some crack talk. Do people still smoke crack? I don't even know if people still smoke crack. Oh, they got to. They, is crack still around? They got to. I'm pretty sure there's high tech ways of smoking it now. But it's still there. Have you ever smoked crack? <laughs> Hell no. <nah. laughs> Have you? <laughs> Hell no. That's, oh, one, that's probably the only two drugs I ain't done is crack and heroin. I probably done everything else there is. Mm -mm. Oh, God. Anybody out there dealing this with our, some... This is our group therapy session right here. This is any, what I feel like. I did want to say anybody out there dealing with any drug addiction, we're not judging you, but we are very much praying for your recovery because... You just got to get up out of that. Yeah. That is the devil working its way around your life. Yeah, you got to have you got to have a, a, a higher power. Uh, if you got to believe in something that's greater than you to get you through that, if you want to uh, get off of that, if you really, really want to start, you can't do it on your own. You, you got to have God on your side. Yeah, and you can do it. Don't tell yourself you can't. But um, on a more positive note, <laughs> Crack is whack. Crack is so whack. No. So the Astros won. I barely found out this morning. I, they won last night going to the World Series. I didn't watch it. Like I told you, I don't watch sports. Did you watch it? I I didn't watch it either. I'm like you that I don't really watch sports except for I I, I do enjoy watching the Rockets play. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm I'm into that. I got my Rockets tattoo right there, but. Yeah, no, nah, I didn't. I didn't watch the game. I didn't even know what they were playing for. I hear all the hype. Everybody saying, "Oh, the Rockets gonna get them." I yeah, mean, and I Astros feel like I'll be a, like a bandwagon fan if I just act like, "Oh, shit, go Astros!" or we're yeah. winning. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't watch them the whole damn season. You know what I'm saying? No, Except, but I mean, we did go to. A no, game. yeah, we went to one game. We did go to a game, but even then, it wasn't really like planned. We just that just. So. I did want to tell y'all, like, I've, I was always into sports, even growing up. So I am a sports fan. I just kind of fell off because of my partner right there. <laughs> she, um, she was like, let's go have some courtside seats, play basketball. I'm like, what you want to go watch all the fools play basketball for? Yeah, that's exactly like that what watch he told me. Play basketball. Come watch me play some basketball. <laughs> you know, watch somebody shoot some ball. But I did watch the beginning uh, of the game, and I was actually at his cousin's house. We were having a girls night out so we did watch the game and then i had to come back home and by the time i was home the game was over and y'all had one go astros i'm so proud of y'all so we're going to world series again and hopefully we take we keep the championship because we won last year yeah so go astros I didn't even know we won last year. Yeah. You didn't know? I, I, I knew we had won recently. We beat the LA. <laughs> I knew that. We beat the LA Dodgers. He didn't know. I oh, didn't God. Know. I don't follow baseball. My dad, when I talk to my dad, my dad will be giving me updates on the Astros and what they're doing. And he'd be telling me players' names and stuff. And I entertain my father because, you know, I love my dad. But I just, I can't keep up with what he's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. It goes through one year, it comes yeah, through the like, other. Like, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, I remember, because I remember it was right when we had that flood, and the Houston was underwater. No, it was after the yeah, flood. Yeah, it was right after the flood, we won the World Series. I know that we told you on our previous vlog that I had the genius idea that I want to create a podcast. So, Carlos, what do you think about that? I think it's a really good idea, because... A lot of times, whenever I'm watching uh, y'all daily vlogs, I'm at the house, I'm in my kitchen, uh, and I, I got an iPad and a Bluetooth speaker in my kitchen. So I'll just have that playing, and I'm listening to what y'all got going on. Yeah, while I'm in there doing listen, something. Yeah. So I, I'm uh, checking out y'all's vlogs in this in the same way that someone would be listening to a podcast, anyways. And to me, it's extremely entertaining, even still in that way when I'm only hearing and not really watching. Yeah. So I think that would translate uh, just as well in a podcast format. Yeah, because I know we got a lot of feedback from y'all. Y'all in the comments were kind of iffy about it. Y'all were like 50 of y'all. 50% of them were like saying yes, do a podcast. Well, I think it was like 75, 25. Most people say yes, and then it was probably like 25% of people were like, nah. And so I kind of wanted to get like another opinion, a close opinion to somebody that does watch us because Coast is subscribed, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like it's a good way because like uh, it just gives us a more... A, Thing where we can talk about whatever we want to talk about and we don't have to be like censored or you know what I'm saying we can have some grown up conversations mm -hmm. so this little episode kind of came from well it kind of it, it's like the seed plant, planting the idea of maybe starting a podcast because yeah. we have the kids situated and they're like the coast is clear and like I said <laughs> last time when we, me and Coast sat down and talked it did good it did like I was like one of the best videos we did all month so I I can tell the audience likes hearing stories and we got a lot of old stories we can tell and yeah would you like to be part of the podcast <laughs> I mean, yeah, if y'all have me, I'm, I'd be more than down. And I would be glad to have both of y'all. Yeah, we should do it. Like a little breakfast club type vibes. Type in the comments, let us know what you think. Yeah, I like doing it because that's just, that's another way to stay working. I like to stay busy, stay working, and that's another way to generate some revenue. Oh, God. And, <laughs> you know, I'm all about that money, and that's another stream of income, baby. And so would y'all like, would y'all want to uh, maybe also incorporate interviews and stuff like yeah. that into the podcast where we bring in other people and yeah. we can all three just attack somebody? Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's, <laughs> that was my vision. My vision was to have basically a, a sit down to where we can just talk about anything in life as as basic as our kids getting mad, getting us mad or whatever and have like no censor and then also be able to like nitpick at the career side yeah um and experiences that's why like i feel like it would be a great idea to incorporate you because y'all have a lot of stories based on the last mm -hmm. sit down y'all had so i know that would be a good idea plus y'all have a pull in the industry so we can pull a lot of y'all's little favorite rappers <laughs> and sit them down and grill them so that would be a great idea in my opinion so y'all stay tuned for that we might come through Y'all type in the comments and let us know if y'all want to see that. But anyways, talking about y'all's past experiences, do y'all want to... Touch on that? Yeah. I kind of want to hear more stories, and I know y'all would too, so... Uh, which story you what story are you want I want to hear what's the most embarrassing thing that y'all have gone through together. Like, the most embarrassing thing. I don't think we really just did embarrassing shit together. I know, I know I've know, i done a bunch of embarrassing shit for me being drunk, but Coaster was always, he never really got drunk and embarrassed himself. I don't think you ever really embarrassed yourself. Huh? Nah, I mean, I always played everything cool. Uh, I know I know. one time I was, I remember, uh, <laughs> you know, I embarrassed the shit out of myself. It was, uh, it was a big radio show in Houston, and, and I don't really even remember a lot of the shit that I did, but Shadow called me the next day and told me, it was like, dog, you, and you started telling me everything oh, I was wait. doing, I was like, nah, I didn't do that. He was like, yes, you did, love. Yes, you did. <laughs> we need to get Shadow on here. Who's Shadow? So Shadow was a producer, right? he's, a, he's, he's a producer. He's the one who made the high, so high, the, uh -huh. the, the beats. He made a lot of my beats, Coast beats. Mm -hmm. He got he some beats on the timeline. On the timeline, he even made a couple beats on there. So he's like... 
he's like a behind the scenes type of guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a yeah, producer. Yeah, he's one of the originators. Yeah, and he, but he's been around since like, the very start of my career. He was there. You know what I'm saying? He he's been there from the very beginning, <laughs> so he knows me very well. But yeah, he was there. So it was a it was a show at a radio show, and this one Bash just got signed to Universal. So there were some Universal reps there too. It was, at a, it was at a hotel, so we're meeting at a hotel, and before we went to the show, and before, okay, before we even did that, Bash and Grimm, which is Shadow's brother, they had an apartment across the street from Dope House on Washington, and we all met there first. While we're waiting for Bash and them to come down, we're in the parking lot, me and a couple of my homies, and we drinking and smoking, and I'm doing, God knows, it's probably like three o'clock in the afternoon. And the show's like in the evening time. So by the time the really evening start. time comes around, I'm lit, toe up. And then we get to this uh, hotel where we're meeting uh, some other people. And I think I ran into a couple of other artists that I don't want to mention their names because probably, I don't want to stop. But I ended up, I, I had seen in, them in another city where they were saying some stuff on stage that I wasn't really feeling. And so oh, I had like I, I was on ten and I just tried to like charge them up in the, in the lobby of the hotel and uh, all the other reps I mean the Universal reps are there bashing them were looking at me like like you tripping and then I'm just like ah and then oh Big Heb is the one who grabbed me Big Heb is uh, Bash's manager wait 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 reps reps like Universal reps like people that that work Sign for people yeah like the hey, people that work for Universal yeah oh god yeah and they were there and so Hev Big Hev is there he's the manager of uh, Slim Thug and Zero and Bash and <laughs> but at this time he was just managing Bash and he's like I got him I got him he tries to grab me and I go punch him in the back oh, of the head god. <laughs> I'm swinging on him and then uh Man, yeah, it was. I was just going wild in this lobby, making a fucking scene, and then. Uh, How old were you? I was like, probably like 23, 24 years old, and then. Oh uh, God. And then Grim and Sha no Troublemaker and Grim, he uh, grabbed me and throw me in the car and drive me back to the apartment and drop me off at the apartment to sleep it off, and then uh, they they went back to the show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even think I made it to the show. And then, yeah, after that, people would be, they were like, Lucky's career is over. He just, <laughs> he just ruined his career. <laughs> if he had any chance of blowing up or getting signed or doing yeah, anything, he just, he just ruined his career. You know what I'm saying? And it took a long time for me to be able to bounce back from that. You know what I'm saying? And it was, that was, yeah, I was embarrassed today. He has always been a big dude, too, man. He like six something. Yeah. Big dude and Lucky, little Lucky was tiny. Yeah, <laughs> Lucky, Lucky was meat and bones back then. Oh, oh god! Yeah, I was real embarrassed after that, man. What about you? Nothing, nothing that comes to the top of your head. Like embarrassing? Uh, no, I can't think of nothing like embarrassing. But you know, there is a story about Lucky that I always wanted to. Uh, I always wanted to tell somebody. Yeah. And I don't, even, I don't even know if I ever told you that this happened. Before. What? To, you told me? Yeah. What? So, uh, we were somewhere, some city, and it might have been Dallas or somewhere. I don't know. Uh, we had a show. And then after the show, we went back to the hotel. And I think we only had like one hotel room. And it might have been maybe four or five of us there. Right? So, um, by three o'clock in the morning, something like that, you was already in bed asleep. I, I think what it was is you was trying to get a bed before any of us, before anybody else. Cause we're all sharing the room. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, you you went to sleep before anybody. Uh, so and so's off in the corner. Uh, I don't know, smoking weed or something in the hotel, and then in the other corner, somebody is on a phone. I'm over uh, by the little desk to be in the hotel, and I got a I got a stereo and I got a CD with beats on it, and I'm sitting there at the desk listening to beats, trying to pick one out, and as I'm switching to the next beat and the music stops, I hear this mumbling behind me, and I'm like, what is that? <laughs> and it's just mumble, 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 and I get up from my desk and I go over to where Lucky's asleep in the bed. Lucky is a sleep freestyler. <laughs> 
just rapping, just <laughs> it's like bars, 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 and they'll kind of nod out and <sighs> bars, 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 and I'm like, sleep. I'm like, this dude is crazy. I've never seen him like this in my life. I thought he was gonna say he farted so no. much. All this stuff. He was literally rapping in his sleep. That's funny. Never uh, seen nobody do that. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man, but that, that was an embarrassing moment of my life, man. Yeah, don't do that. Mm -hmm. No, I can't do that. I felt like I, 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 back then I felt like I was uh, entitled. You know what I'm saying? Because when you, when you have like a, when you, when you know you've got a gift or whatever, you feel like entitled, like, uh, like people, the world owes you something because you're, you're good at something. You know what I'm saying? And you, you, a lot of times people make excuses for themselves and be like, oh, they just hating on me or they don't want to see me shine or they, and that's what I was, I would do at that time. So I would lash out on the industry or radio people or DJs and I would just feel like they was hating on me, you know what I'm saying? Because they weren't playing my music. I was like, why they ain't playing my music? I know I'm better than these dudes. And, and it was just, I wasn't. I wasn't seeing it like, it's not the music uh, for gifted and talented people, it's the music business. And if you ain't about your business and on top of your game, you're not gonna get nowhere. And I was not about my business <laughs> on top of my game. I was just thinking, just cause I knew how to rap that all of a sudden I was gonna blow up. And that ain't how it worked. Did you ever go back to like your early music with fresh ears and be like, okay, now I kind of understand why they didn't really show me that love that I expected them to or something like that. Cause that happened to me a lot. I listen to stuff that I made back in 2002, 2003, stuff like that, mm -hmm. that I, I swore up and down was the hottest thing. And yeah, then, yeah, 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 you know yeah. Yeah, I mean? no, I go back to listen. I'm like, damn, what the hell was I thinking? Yeah. yeah. But some shit I go back and listen to, I was like, damn, that was cold. Right. You know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a couple, couple songs that like, like on my album, the You Already Know album, I think there's some songs on there that was like real hard, like like that you could tell I was putting my heart into it. But then after that, the albums that came like right after that, I was just like bullshitting and just throwing anything together, you know what I'm Feeling saying? Yourself. Feeling myself. Yeah. Yeah, building that catalog the whole time though. Yeah, building the catalog <laughs> the whole time. Man. That's what it's all about. You gotta build I learned that from Tootie. Tootie, which is, if they all don't know, that's uh, Carlos's brother, SPM's brother, Tootie. And that's the guy that was in charge of me and Costa's. He was the owner of the label, Dope House. He was running Dope House back then. Mm -hmm. He was the one that was signing the checks, paying for our whatever we needed for our music. So we had, we really, y'all don't, don't know that me and Costa, we probably have a closer and better relationship with SPM's brother than we do with SPM. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? Cause we spent more time with Tootie and we just, we were closer to Tootie than we were to Carlos because we just were there every day of our lives, every day. Yeah, and when Carlos got locked up and Tootie was running the show anyways. Yeah. So, it, you know. But yeah, that, I got that from him. He would, he would be like, I gotta build it. I remember he was like, he would tell you, when's that Twin Barrettas album coming? When's that Lucky album coming? When's the, when when y'all doing it? He was like, all right, I gotta build that catalog. I gotta build that catalog. And then I was like, man, what is this dude doing? And I knew like our albums weren't finna just go platinum and sell. So I was like, why is he like so, you know what I'm saying, happy about us turning in these albums? You know what I'm saying? And that's what it was. I, I figured out that he was getting a check from the distributor for all his albums, not just mine or Coast album or SPM's album. He was getting a check every month from his distributor for all his albums on that catalog. Yeah, good old Southwest Wholesale. Yep. So then I was like, man, I need to build my catalog. <laughs> so that's exactly what I did. Okay, so y'all want to hear the most embarrassing thing that happened to me Absolutely. when I was an entertainer? Okay, a lot of y'all always go in the comments and like he's always telling me, you need to not be ashamed of your past, which I want to like just kill it. I'd be like, I, I was never there. That wasn't me. And like, I'd be like, man, you was a dancer somewhere. It's a whole bunch of girls that was a dancer. It, was, it ain't like you were 30. <laughs> now, I, if you 35 years old in your 30s, still yeah. in the club dancing, you messed up. But if you 19, 20 years but old. But I, I will say that I, I had a job. I had a nine to five. And then I also went to college. And then at night, I would go and hustle 
in the clubs and so the most embarrassing thing that happened to me that like oh my god when y'all were telling me the stories i was like in my head like should i tell them <laughs> so i was like I, I i was a skinny dancer so i wasn't like the type to like you know just be dribbling my butt <laughs> i've never heard that word dribbling so butt. I, long story short i tr- I, I worked the pole a lot like the pole <laughs> the pole was my thing so one time i was feeling myself and i climbed all the way to the top i did like a little oh, backflip and i lost the grip oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so when i tell you that i was way up oh, here shit. and i go bam that's how you know you wasn't meant for that place baby. no listen <laughs> and then the dj goes oh man hold up and he literally left the dj booth and ran to go get me because like all the security guards and managers like he was like the only guy that that was in the actual club at the moment that worked there he came and he shook me he's like are you okay and i was like no <laughs> <laughs> was it pat uh no it was but it was there was people there and that's why i was feeling myself because there was a crew of people shout out to y'all because y'all was making it rain on me <laughs> and then like the, the funny thing is that when i got off they just like here you can have the rest like they didn't <laughs> so that <laughs> could you imagine being in the club and you're like, oh yeah you know she getting it and then out of nowhere it's like bam but when I tell you I had to go to chiropractor after that, like, it, like, messed me up for a good I'm delayed. You want to be on that pole. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was pretty embarrassing. And, like, all the, all my friends, they were like, oh, my God, girl. Like, they was all singing to me, like, it's going to be okay. This and this happened to me before or whatever. But So you, like, just body slammed yourself. Yeah, like, yes, and I fell dead on my back. Like, it was embarrassing. <laughs> And you could just hear it, and I was on the main main stage, yeah. so it was embarrassing. You can you can hear you can hear when you hit the stage on yes. top of the music that was playing. Yes, yes. Ooh, I know you hit hard. Yeah. How old were you? Uh, I don't know. I was probably like nineteen, twenty. So you had just. So I got out of I got out of that life around uh, right after I turned twenty one, I think. Cause I was like in and out. I was always debating. Like I'm like, all right, I'm doing good. And then whenever I would need that little extra, uh, you know, money, a I would lick. yeah, I would go back. Mm-hmm. And and it was hard for me because I was making money as a waitress. And then some days I just had to, I just had to put my heels on and I had to go out <laughs> there. So you know, I had a good you know uh, relationship with the managers and stuff to where. If I didn't want to dance that night, I could just, you know, come in and waitress. So, I mean, I, I dealt with customers on both ends, like taking care of their drinks and stuff and their tables and then also having to, yeah. But that day I was like, mm. I don't know what, and I wasn't even drunk. I wasn't even like, it wasn't even like I was on it. It was just like, I was feeling myself and I lost grip and I just, bam. And that was probably the most embarrassing thing I dealt with. How high up would you? It was high, like it was to the top. I, like, I, I felt the cords up there, like oh, you felt the, the lights. Top, top. Yes, it was like I, and I think that's what happened is I got caught in one of the cords, mm-hmm. the light cords. Damn, you just and, caught way up there. And then yeah, because like then I would just flip over and like be hanging upside down, and that was like my thing I was gonna do. Oh, yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> But look, I got caught in the damn cords. Man, you should have sued the club. That's no. what I'm thinking the whole time. That sounds like a liability. See, I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't know none of this. I'm just sitting there like, I'm sorry, I was embarrassed, you guys. But mm. yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. But that's just an accident, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's still embarrassing. It was so embarrassing. A lot of my embarrassing moments, I just did it to myself, like. Jesus Christ, help us. I'm so happy I got out of that life, though. So. Yeah, I didn't know that about you. That's good you tell them that. That's good that you're telling them that because I'm sure there's a lot of young girls that are still in their life, you know what I'm saying? And they look up to you, you know what I'm saying? They follow you, they watch you, and they see how you matured. And you see, you're 24 years old. You got, you know what I'm saying, kids. You're raising your kids. you taking care of the house. and You know what I'm saying? You, you made something positive out of your life. 
Yeah, I, I actually had a friend that was in the game for about, what, 15 years? And she would always tell me, like, you got to get in and you got to get out. Like, you got to save your money. If this is what you're going to do to try and, like, you know, use it as a stepping stone, like, you just got to save your money and invest it, do whatever you got to do, get on your feet and get out. Because I've been in the game for 15 years and... I still don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I still don't know what I'm doing with my life. Yeah, so. that's, a lot. that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of girls that are still, like, in their 30s, and they still in there doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I will say that that environment is very toxic, not only because it promotes alcohol, money, and just things that you think are fun and that is just, like, making your life better. But at the end of the day, when reality hits, it's like... Easy money goes the same way yep. it comes. Fast, hey, money. fast money does not last. It goes, you can ask any D-boy, anybody in the street, any jacker, any stripper, they'll tell you that. The fastest that mm -hmm. money comes, the fast they go. I, and I used to get my money, pay for my school because I didn't get financial aid. I paid for my car. I used to pay my mom's bills and I used to buy my daughter all the new J's. I bought myself all the new shoes and like I still had a job as well. So... It was like I was trying to basically I just needed guidance. I just needed a little somebody to push me to the next level and tell me, look, you don't need to do all that. You don't need you and know, then what stick, I do. I, that's stick, what I tell you, right? Baby? You know what's crazy? When I met Lucky, I was in a in a in a tough spot because I was debating whether I wanted to go back to that life. And which was so crazy to me because I was stuck in church life. I was trying to like do the whole church life thing. And he was drunk out of his mind, you guys. No, I wasn't. Yes, he was. You he, must not have seen me drunk out of my mind was. because I was well, he was drunk. Because <laughs> he doesn't even he doesn't even remember telling me this. But I was sober and he started telling me, like, what are you doing here? Like, you're too good to be in here. Like, you don't need to be in here. Like, just go home. You need money. And he actually No, but she was she wasn't that you weren't dancing there. No, she, I, I just walked in and like um I was basically just gonna go chill and hang out. And Ace ran up and was like, I was lucky. But that's another story. The whole point is, I'm literally sober. They had already been chilling in there. And I would, the, he would start asking me questions. And I'm like, no, I'm just hanging out. And he's like, you don't need to be in here. You don't need to be in here. And he started telling me all this. But when he was talking to me, like, I legit felt like that was God telling me. Like, because before I walked in the club, I was like, man, why am I even coming in here? Like, this is just coming back into my past. Like, mm -hmm. why am I even in here? But my friend was like, come on, let's go, let's just hang out. So I was like, all right, I haven't been out in a while. So when Lucky started telling me like, you're too good to be in here. Like you got a whole business going for you. Like you got your whole, you know? Like, Cause she was doing nails. She had a nail, <clears throat> right? You was doing yeah, nails. Yeah, I, I was starting my own nail business. And so I was doing good. I was literally going to church, working, taking care of my kid. And that one night I stepped out and I ran into him and he started just spilling this stuff to me like, you don't need to be in here, you know, like, and then I was just like, and he even offered me money and I was like, no, nah, you're good. Like, I don't, I'm not here to do all that. Like, I'm just hanging out and you want to tell him what you did to the little girl that was coming to sit on your lap? What I do, I don't remember. <laughs> I think this girl felt like, uh, what is it? Like if I was a threat, because mm. when she saw him looking at me and talking to me, like she came and sat on his lap. So I took that as like my cue to like leave because I'm not trying to step on nobody's toes. I know you're <laughs> trying to hustle. Like I'm not trying to take him from you. So I'm getting up and I'm walking away. And he's like, Get off me. Like, he pushed the girl. I don't think God probably slapped her on the booty and told no, her. No, you didn't. No, he didn't. He literally, like, shoved her off him and was like, no, hold on, hold on. Let me get your number before you leave. I believe I believe that before I believe you just gave her a little smack. Like, yeah, he, like, like, she was, like, sitting on him. And so I'm like, all right, it was nice meeting you and talking to you. And I'm, like, trying to walk around them. And he, like, literally shoved her. And, <laughs> hold up. And he was like, hold on, let me get you number before you leave. And I was like, Lucky, I, I don't want, want no, no drama, drama Lucky. <laughs> I got all the drama, baby. I was Come like, on. I don't want no drama. And and he was like, no, nah, you're good. And so I was like, all right. And that's how we met, if y'all wanted uh, to know. So, long story short, that that little guidance or that little word of or push of encouragement. Hey, but you never went back, right? Get after out of that. that. And now she never went back in there after that. To get out of that life, I got it from him and I took that as a sign and 
look at us now like it, it's just crazy to me how it all just unfolded but and we lived happily ever after. <laughs> I feel like like stories like this, where you talk about how things were situated one way, and then through growth and progression, things uh, turn out this other way, is a good thing that could be portrayed in the podcast for people to just be doing their thing in their day. Maybe maybe they can pinpoint themselves somewhere in that timeline of yeah. what y'all are speaking on. Yeah. And be able to fit themselves into that. Yeah, that's because I saw us telling her that she shouldn't be ashamed of her past because there's a lot of girls that are going through that. It's Especially not, in Houston, it's, man. You're... It's not that I'm ashamed, but, you know, based on our family channel, family vlog, trying to turn it into, like, a family deal, I just don't feel comfortable promoting that side of me or, yeah. like, mm. my past. So, it, it's taking a lot for me to actually take that step forward to actually bringing y'all into that and letting y'all know like hey yeah you know i was because a lot of y'all i do be in the comments and y'all be coming for me like y'all be coming for me for real that's why i be trying to keep it real with my kids and let them know everything about me because i don't want my kids to find out one day like oh my god my dad did this or my dad's like this or you know what i'm saying i, I told kingston this before i'm like man a lot of parents out there they hide who they really are in front of their kids and their kids might open the door one day and see their parents doing some shit and be like oh my god but i was i told him i was like i don't want you to ever feel like that with me that's why i keep it real to you i talk to you just like you one of my homies like i mean i still want you to respect me as your dad but i don't hide nothing from my kids i keep it real and i let them know who i really am yeah but it's different with like women yeah I feel, yeah I feel. because you know i'm not just gonna be like yeah girls i used to dance <laughs> so many. like you know so there's just things that you can be open with your children um with and then there's other things that you just gotta take to the grave and if it ever does come to light you know there's a way to address that so with that being said, I think we're going to wrap this video up. Because we got a little deep. <laughs> Thank you, Coach, for coming. Y'all might see more of this. Um, so make sure you hit the like button before you head out. Make sure you subscribe. And make sure that you... Make sure you copy and Coach album, Timeless, that just came out. If you want that real shit, it's in there, man. Timeless, Spotify, Apple Music, everywhere you can download music is there. I will say it's one of my favorite, like, albums on my playlist. So. Hey. Shout yeah, out to she you. do this too. She listens to it more than I listen to it. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to everybody out there um, showing us love, showing them love, and putting positivity out there. We love y'all so much. And learn from our mistakes. Don't make excuses for yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't make excuses for yourself. Oh, my daddy didn't hug me enough, or my mama wasn't there. Stop being or, a snowflake. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You, gotta, you, gotta, you can't do that, man. Stop making excuses for yourself. Nobody's entitled to nothing. If you want it, you got to work hard for it, man. No matter how good you are at something. Even Michael Jordan, you will tell you, that he's cold at basketball, but it ain't just come to him. He had to go work for them championships. So, round of applause. Sports sports reference. <laughs> <laughs> Adios. Tell them where they can find you at all. Um, uh, you got your Instagram back. Instagram. I got my Instagram back. You can find me at Cassette Coast. We're going to be back probably next week. See us again. Deuce.